Hello everyone, this is Running On Empty Food Review. Well, hello, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone watching. Welcome one and all to this newest edition of the Running On Empty Food Review series. I'm your host, the Report of the Week. Thank you for checking in. Well, if you have access to a calendar, and presumably we all do, at least in, in one capacity or another, we know that Halloween is just around the corner, and it is crazy how time has flown by, uh, but nonetheless, we're about halfway through the month of October, and Halloween is, like I said, right around the bend. Now you could obviously see, just by checking out this video for a few seconds, I am all about the Halloween life, as they say. Uh, you could see, obviously, I have my orange Halloween vest on, I have my skeleton necktie going, and I have some Halloween decorations scattered around as well. Uh, you can see right here I've got my water, and I have the shortwave radio right here, which is definitely a Halloween staple. But I thought there's one thing missing, right? Because you think about it, with Halloween comes all sorts of, all sorts of interesting aesthetics, and you think, oh yeah, scary movies, scary things, what, what inspires and instills a sense of fear in us, right? What instills that sense of dread? Well, Burger King, right? So I made sure to get some Burger King. <laughs> All right, I kind of I kind of joke there, but Burger King, I certainly have had my share of bad experiences with them, and sometimes they, they can be quite scary, but they can be good too sometimes, but I had to throw that out there. Anyway, Burger King is releasing a Halloween-themed item, and speaking of, if there's something that was truly terrifying, I don't know if anyone remembers, but back, I think it was 2015 or so, they released a Halloween Whopper, I think, that had this this bun that was, I think it was black in color, and uh, that was, uh, <laughs> that certainly was uh, an item that I'll never forget. But anyway, Burger King has released, for Halloween, their new Ghost Pepper Whopper. And obviously, it has ghost in the title, so that right then and there makes this Halloween-themed. So here's what the emphasis is. They said this is going to be a very spicy sandwich, it's going to be Halloween themed, and again, it's supposed to really pack a punch. Now, this is a premium sandwich. It is $9 in price. So it's $9 just for the sandwich, one beef patty. So take that into account. They're gonna charge a premium for this, but they say it's a premium sandwich. Here's what it has. It comes with a quarter pound flame grilled beef patty. It has ghost pepper cheese on it. It has bacon, some jalapenos, some queso sauce, and it has an orange and black sesame seed bun for some Halloween uh, festivities there, a little bit of a Halloween aesthetic going. So I got the sandwich right here, and let's see what it's all about, and I'll just try it out. We'll see how spicy it is, if it's any good or not, etc., and then just kind of go from there. So looking at the, the sandwich right now, to give credit where credit is due, it's actually more vibrant than the ads portrayed it, which is, I'll say this, that's a rarity these days, uh, because you obviously know the way that it works with so much fast food, right? If you ever get fast food, I mean, you see this so many times, you have the ad and the picture, and what it is portrayed as looking like online, and it always looks so vibrant, so colorful, it looks, uh, they try to make it look, of course, as delectable as possible, but then when you actually get it, it's like, what, it looks like, it looks nothing like the ad. This, on the other hand, like I said, it's pretty rare, but purely from appearance, it's more colorful, and I would describe it as bold, then it's portrayed as being in the ads, which is interesting. So they have the, the festive bun right there. Again, it's supposed to be, you know, dyed uh, orange a bit, and it has the black sesame seeds there for Halloween. There's that ghost pepper cheese, the bacon, and what else have we? Uh, there's the queso and some of the jalapenos. 
They said these are like the little jalapeno crisps. Crispy little jalapeno bits. And again, looking right here, uh, a couple bacon strips, a few more jalapenos. So that is the Ghost Pepper Whopper. Price, once again, $9. So, purely based on aesthetics, so far so good. Now let's try it out. Let's see if it tastes any good, how spicy it is, uh, if it really is terrifying, if it chills me to the bone, which, well, it's supposed to be hot, so I guess that wouldn't happen unless it's so hot that it seems cold. That, that's possible. Well, let's try it out anyway. The Ghost Pepper Whopper from Burger King, going in. And I'm going to take one more bite. To give credit, where credit is due, uh, this is a spicy, this is a spicy burger. I will say that undoubtedly. Uh, it most definitely is. Burger King can be really hit or miss. Now, I will say this. They have improved somewhat over the years. Back in like 2016 or so, I had so many problems with them. These days, they still have their share of misses. But there are definitely some items that they release that they really hit the mark and it's exactly what they said it's going to be. Now this is an interesting thing that I can compare this to because a few reviews back, you might remember, I tried out this item from, I think it was Shake Shack, and it was their Hot Ones Burger. And that too was supposed to be a spicy burger. And it was spicy, no doubt. But this right here, the Ghost Pepper Whopper from Burger King, is spicier than it, for sure. And when you initially look at it, all right, you think name-wise, yeah, it's the Ghost Pepper Whopper, okay. It looks Halloween-themed, right? You can see the cheese, and you can see the bun, and the, the bacon, and all of that. But you might think, how spicy is this really? Because so often you get these items from all these places. Even Burger King as well, Wendy's, McDonald's, etc., etc. Ghost pepper this, right? Ghost pepper that. And they say, it's going to be so hot. And then, of course, you eat it and it really isn't. The hottest thing about this, spice-wise, is definitely the cheese. Now, when I look over the ingredients, I think, of course, it's going to be the cheese. But it's just interesting because when I'm looking at it, the cheese itself looks very unassuming. It, it just looks like, oh, it's just a normal piece of cheese. It's not going to be that hot, is it? I mean, come on. It's like, you, you usually associate spice with these sorts of sauces, or you might think, oh, those uh, the jalapenos on it are going uh, to be really hot, etc. 
like I said, the cheese just looks like a standard uh, slice of cheese. But that's where all that spice is. And here's the thing. Certainly there's a number of ingredients on this. Sure, again, you've got the bacon, the jalapenos, the queso, the bun, uh, all of that. But this is one of those items where what you really taste, and all that you, you can necessarily taste, what lingers on as an aftertaste, etc., is the spice. Once you bite in, and once you, you take that first bite, as soon as your mouth comes in contact with that slice of cheese, the effect is immediate, and the spice will hit you, it will hit you in an extremely pronounced manner, and it will linger. And the spicy aftertaste is still there as I'm kind of delivering this assessment right now, so it's still lasting, and for as long as I'm doing the video, I'll let you know if that spicy aftertaste goes away, but so far it hasn't. So the spice is immediate. And it, oh, it seems to me like it's not necessarily in the back of my mouth. It's not necessarily... Sometimes I'll have these, these spicy, whatever they are, wings or sandwiches, hot sauces, etc. And it's like, I don't taste anything at first, but then the spice starts working its way almost from the back of my mouth uh, forward and you kind of taste it back there. In this case, though, the spice seems concentrated more on my tongue and in the front of my mouth, as opposed to some of those instances where you have something really spicy and it comes back as an aftertaste, and when you're exhaling, when you're trying to enunciate, etc., then the spice keeps coming back. In this case, it's been there on my tongue and in the front of my mouth for the duration. And it's very strong, very potent, for those of you who really like spicy food, like if you're one of those people that's always going to places and you're getting hot wings and you're getting like the spiciest sauces on the menu and you just really like all things that are just really hot, this probably isn't going to seem terribly spicy to you. But for most people, for like your average Burger King consumer, even if you get an occasional spicy item here or there, this is definitely going to be a bit above what you're usually used to. So bear that into account. If you consider yourself very well-versed, very comfortable with spice, you'll probably be able to handle this on your own. Like, even in my case, I went for the water, obviously, and I know people say the water just kind of spreads it around, and, it, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. Usually the milk and all of that is a better alternative. But nonetheless, I was tempted to go for a cold drink uh, of sorts after I took those bites, but I wanted to just, I thought... No, I just want to I just want to experience the spice head on. I want to experience it as it is, see how strong it winds up being and how long it lasts for. But uh, even I myself and you know, my tolerance for spice is kind of maybe slightly higher than average, but by no means am I one of those professional uh, eaters or anything. But even so, definitely on the higher end uh, compared to what I'm I'm usually comfortable or familiar with. And for those of you who prefer not to have spicy foods, this is definitely going to seem real spicy. You might say, all right, all right, I get it, I get it, it's a spicy burger. Can you talk about the other stuff on it? But that's just the thing that I'm trying to make certain here and try to get the point across. When you get this, it's really going to be totally irrelevant whether or not there's any queso on this. It's going to be completely irrelevant whether or not there's bacon on this or not because you're not going to be able to taste it. Sure, as you're, you're, you're eating it, texturally speaking, you'll be able to discern, oh yeah, that's the, the crispness of the jalapeno pieces. Oh yeah, that's the, the, the bacon there. Maybe it's a little chewy, etc. But you're not going to sit there saying, oh, that's the queso right there. I could definitely, that's so flavorful. All you're going to be able to notice is the spice. So treat this item as a novelty. And I try to explain that from time to time. There's different types of items out there on the fast food spectrum. There's those items that make for a really good meal, a big feast when you're really hungry. There's those items that more or less are just something to post about on social media or get as like a once-off thing and say, oh yeah, I got it. Now I could say, I got it and I tried it out, etc. This is one of those items. It's more or less about the novelty of the Halloween aesthetic of the sandwich and how spicy it is as opposed to actually being able to enjoy the meal uh, from a flavor standpoint. Quality-wise, though, can't really complain. I could taste a tiny bit of the beef, which is your standard uh, flame-grilled 
beef patty from Burger King. Uh, somewhat juicy, uh, maybe a, a little, not as tender, I'm trying to say, as sometimes, but it's still totally fine. Bacon as well, a little fatty. I can't really taste much of the queso at all that's on it, nor can I really taste the jalapenos. The bun as well just seems to just be a standard bun, mostly just has the coloring in it for a Halloween aesthetic. So what you're gonna notice about this, the spice, it's pronounced. That aftertaste is starting to die down on my end, but it's still there. Uh, it still is there. At this point, it's totally tolerable, but it's, it, like I said, it has not gone away yet. So, yeah, all in all, novelty item, yeah, it is pricey. $9 for just a burger, that's not really what we want to see. But at least, at least, it's what they said it is, and then some. Aesthetically pleasing, in my opinion, and most importantly, the advertised price, <laughs> they didn't, well, I guess they did advertise the price. I misspoke there, though. I was trying to say they advertised spice, they promised spice, and they delivered on the spice. And that's what we want to see. So Burger King, yeah, they've let me down from time to time. They certainly can be a scary place as well. But this time, at least, I'm fine with the item. Is it something I'd necessarily get again? No. Is it a novelty? Yes. Can you discern much about it aside from the spice? No. But they wanted it to be a spicy burger. It is a spicy burger. Please take that into account. So, all in all, it's exactly as advertised, slightly overpriced, doesn't taste bad at all, quite spicy. I would say if you get this, get a, a soft drink at the ready, especially if you're sensitive. If you're really sensitive to spice, maybe just pass on it just in case. But uh, otherwise, yeah, expect for... Uh, a little bit of a ride in that regard. Therefore, out of 10, I'm going to be rating the Ghost Pepper Whopper from Burger King an 8.4 out of 10. Now that's an 8.4 out of 10 novelty item, but they completely delivered on it. So with that, that's all that I have for you today. Thanks for watching this review. Now I hope you could say you're informed about the Ghost Pepper Whopper. And out of curiosity, if you had this item, how spicy did you think it was? Feel free to leave a comment and uh, give your own assessment if you'd like. I'm curious, how spicy did you think this was uh, compared to other items? So feel free to leave a comment if you'd like. That's all that I have for you, and until next time, I'm your host, the Report of the Week. Take care.